Bears will be our starters. Some intriguing matchups on the floor tonight. Sit tight. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome to 2K Sports, everyone. We have some exciting NBA action coming up with Hall of Famers, Grant Hill and Doris Burke. This is Brian Anderson, plus our reporter, Ali LaForce. Ali, take it away. Well, you may have noticed that Joel Embiid hits the court a lot. He said, quote, I've learned it during my rehab from a foot injury. The specialist told me to limit the impact on my body. Every time I'm in a situation that'll put extreme stress on my leg, I've got to dive or just roll onto the floor. All right, Ali, thanks. All right, let's take a look at some numbers for Aaron Gordon. And his free throw shooting has really improved over the last month. I don't know if it's him spending more time practicing this part of his game, but whatever he is doing at the strike, it's working. A look at the 76ers starting group. Harris and Embiid make up the front court. Ben Simmons is out there with Matisse Thibel. And it's Green in at the three. And for Orlando, Gordon plays four, Vucevic at center. Fultz runs the point with Fournier at the two, and it's Ross in at the three. Surveying the league doors, some teams that look great on paper coming into the year have really underachieved thus far. And that's why this season is always so interesting. All the theories and predictions eventually give way to the actual on-court performance. So have injuries played a part? Have personality conflicts played a part? What's fascinating to me is a team with one player switch up, regardless of position on the interior. Go ahead. Well, this guy is a lethal distance shooter. help create space for a shot for Orlando. in the league, Doris. No, there's no doubt about that, B.A., and it's developing the other nuances of the game, making sure that perimeter game is on point and efficient. There's so much to like and plenty to build on. I don't Shoot think two. we've seen the best of Aaron Gordon quite yet. So much going on in the country last summer, and we saw a lot of NBA players at the forefront of activism. And, B.A., it was really special to see these young players using their voice, using their resources, making with the activism, I was impressed with the leadership from these NBA players, and if you noticed, athletes from other sports followed the lead of these players from the NBA.
That one on Harris. Well, Aaron Gordon welcomes the opportunity to be fouled. You cannot be careless with your defense. one falls for him. There is some Blake Griffin, a younger Blake Griffin in Aaron Gordon, right? The explosive, ferocious forward takes pleasure in hammering it down. It's both from the strike. First quarter of action, just under three and a half minutes played. Simmons drives in, and it's Simmons with the jam. What a way to begin this game. Dominating at both ends of the floor. And give them credit for approaching this game with the right energy and intensity. This team has attacked every chance they've gotten. Out to the wing, Vucevic finds Gordon. Outside, Fultz. Shot clock at five. Drives to the hoop. Shoots over Embiid. Here's Vucevic. And he got the whistle on the way up. So he'll be headed to the line for a pair. This guy's so polished inside. Nikola Vucevic great at being assertive and earning these fouls. And the former Trojan, Nikola Vucevic, puts up a ton of numbers, but he's more than just a stats guy. He's locked in as a pillar for this Magic team. And that one falls for Vucevic. And Vucevic is emerging as a longtime leader for Orlando, I think. Yeah, B.A., he's established himself as one through his play and vocal nature out on the court. Vucevic will be the first to criticize himself. I mean, he's really changed his game to help them become a more competitive team. And so Vucevic nails both of them. We know this about Nikola Vucevic. He's a high percentage finisher. To me, the next steps, right? Improve your defense, be more consistent with range. And if he does that, he's golden. Now here's Embiid. Consistent production from him. Averaging around 27 and a half points a game. Gordon outside. On the wing, Fournier. Vucevic against Embiid. Back to Fournier. And he comes up with a bucket. What a polished offensive game. Fournier cashing in from the mid-range. For Philadelphia, they've got seven of eight in the basket. To the middle. Here's Embiid. And then Embiid with the dunk. He's just an aggressive finisher there inside. Hey, when you got bounce like that, you feel like you can take on anybody. Now here's Fultz. How quiet so far offensively, searching for his first points of the game. Driving in. And he converts the layup. Well, this has to contribute to Markel Fultz's confidence, showing right there he can get through the defense. Pass to Thibel. On the wing, Green. Outside Thibel. Offline with a three. Orlando trailing here. Gordon outside. Outside Ross. Now here's Vucevic. Pulls the screen on Embiid. Vucevic goes in. And Joel Embiid pulls it down. For Philadelphia, they've gone 8 of 10 shooting. Now here's Simmons. He's got seven. Pass to Embiid. Embiid drawn the double team. Embiid, a screen on Gordon. Here's Simmons. And slammed up by Simmons. And just a great screen. And they got a high-powered finish out of it. And my question is, where was the help? Someone rotate over and challenge.
referees checked in. Trying anything now to get them out of this slump. Just feels like the basket is looking awfully small to them right now. They're having a hard time getting anything to fall. Now here's Vucevic. Taking command on offense when they need him. Putting up 21 a game. Over to the left wing. Pass to Fultz. Fournier with the ball. Three-pointer. The rebound by Embiid. Embiid's got four rebounds in the game. This guy has not been a factor at all in this quarter, and it has hurt the team. Harris finds Simmons. Here's Embiid. And he finishes. That makes him four out of five. Getting out to a nice lead. Great flow and great execution. Fultz passes to Vucevic. And here's Gordon. The three is up. The rebound by Simmons. Ooh, that's a tough break. After poor communication defensively, it leaves him all by himself. Go with a three. They get it back. And the foul called on Markel Fultz. That's his first foul of the game. Defense the Magic. They trail by 11. They're looking for a little bit of redemption in this one after the loss to them here last time. If they want to beat these guys this time, they have to do better on the glass. That was their undoing. Well, you have to believe the coaching staff made that a point of emphasis. Better aggressiveness, better intensity on the backboards. Now here's Simmons. 14 points for him last game against Milwaukee. And let's not forget about the assist. This guy as a playmaker was a driving force for that offense. Right wing. Six to shoot. Pass to Harris. With his first shot attempt. It doesn't go for him. So Orlando will take it the other way. Well, they put up a nice win against Chicago last time out. It was an all-out effort on defense. I mean, they stepped up for one another and helped each other out so well on this end. We talk about multiple efforts on the defensive end, and I thought, boy, that was good old-fashioned focus, team effort. What a win. Bamba's checked in for Orlando. Carter Williams comes in for Fournier. Howard's checked in for the Sixers. in the game. Outside Milton. Pass to Embiid. Over Bamba. Embiid can't hit. And the Magic shooting just about 29% so far. Not great. Gordon with a screen on Simmons. Here's Bamba. Screen by Bamba. Gordon on the take. It's not going to go that time. The Sixers leading. Gordon with a steal. Inside. Here's Burke. Oh, a great one-two punch. Beautiful pass and a nasty jam. Boy, don't you love to see Aaron Gordon make these kinds of decisions. This guy is fully capable of recognizing open teammates. To the paint. Here's Simmons. And it's Simmons with the jam. When you finish like that, you deserve to brag. <laughs> Impressive, no question. 
How about that from the point guard, gentlemen? Playing big at the rim. Okay. Here's Carter Williams. What? No scoring yet from him, but that's likely to change. Bamba, that's good. Defensively, they've got to get more bodies in the paint. That's three straight field goals from below the free throw line. Well, Mo Bamba, the sixth pick in the 2018 draft. He's listed at seven feet, and he is a rim protector extraordinaire, Doris. Well, B.A., this is an amazing number. Seven foot ten. That's Mo Bamba's wingspan. Boy, with that kind of reach, you can't teach it, and it's a problem for offensive players to deal with. Shot is good by Gordon. He has no answer defensively inside. Philadelphia has gone two of five from beyond the arc in the first quarter. Outside Milton. Outside Simmons. Pass to Embiid. This one for three. They get it again. Howard, the pass to Embiid. Count that one. He's now five for eight. I love how they've attacked the boards here in the first quarter. Orlando trailing here. Here's Carter Williams. Here's Gordon. And that one comes up a bit short. About seven seconds separating the shot and game clocks. Simmons against Anthony. Simmons, the pass to Embiid. And then Embiid with the dunk. Yeah, a real versatile big man with multiple sweet spots out on the floor. Embiid is definitely on a roll. First, Aaron Gordon off the floor so fast. Don't sleep on him, gentlemen. You're going to look silly. From deep, here's Simmons. Oh, got it off in time, but it's no good. And that does it for the first quarter. Sixers ahead, leading by seven. Don't go away. We'll be back with the second quarter in just a moment. Joel Embiid earlier, he hopes to set an example for those who may want to follow in his rather large footsteps. It's about the uh, At the end of the day, you come here, you want to make an impact, and you know, share your story with everybody, uh, and so you kind of pushes everybody back home in the whole continent to want to do the same thing. Well, certainly Embiid puts himself front and center, willing to lead the cause on and off the court. And this is where his big personality helps. He has a larger-than-life quality that moves people. And for those of you just tuning in, second quarter action is where we are. All right, guys, what's your take on the Sixers so far? It's all about the strong inside-out game in the first period. It really helped them get some clean looks down low. It is great when you can get that established early because to me it opens up every other aspect of your game. Taking a look at Philadelphia. We've got Furkan Korkmaz, Tobias Harris out there with Dwight Howard. Then there's Danny Green, and it's Maxi in at the point guard position. personality of a head coach can really rub off on a team. So what's your preference, Grant? You like a, a player's coach or you like a coach who lights a fire? A BA, 19 years in the NBA, I've had both. <laughs> and I'll tell you this, as a young player, you like a coach who lights a fire under his guys. And that helps you understand and learn the game and become a better player and a better team. But as you get older, you may like a coach who has a different approach, more reserved. It doesn't need to push it or motivate you the same way. And so I think it's important, though, with a general manager that he understands the makeup of his team, understands what personality is needed 
to motivate and resonate with that particular ball club. That's why the personality of a coach is crucial to a team's success. Boy, it appears it's a match made in heaven for Markel Fultz and the Orlando Magic. The team obviously was much in need of a building block in the backcourt. Fultz was given the keys, and boy, has he delivered. As for Markel Fultz, he was able to get the chances he needed to develop doors. That's exactly right, PA. Without a doubt, Orlando sees him as a big part of their future. He's still so young with tremendous upside. The team took a chance. He gets a fresh start. Both parties are happy. And the whistle on the shot. Got some contact there. Misses the shot, but he'll shoot two. And there's the call. Orlando with the foul. Shooting two. The first one falls. At this point for Dwight Howard in his career, it's about being efficient. I mean, we know he can grab rebounds, play defense. He's just got to stay aggressive and efficient on the offensive end. Perfect from the line this time. Here's Fultz. He's got five. Outside Ross. There's the three. The shot comes out. Their strong work ethic has been evident on the glass. Really getting after it and being physical. For three, Maxi. And it's cleared by Vucevic. Vucevic has got five rebounds tonight. And here's Fultz. A steady force on their offense. Recording around 14 and a half a game. And the Magic again can't hit. Right now trying to get into a rhythm. But so far this quarter, boy, he is struggling to make anything go down. Now here is Howard. He's covered closely. Shot from 12. It's hauled in by the Magic. Vucevic has got his sixth rebound on the night. Fultz with it. Here he goes. Can't get the finger roll. Well, we love his ability to attack the rim. He just loses a little bit of focus and misses the chippy. Here's Korkmaz. And off the left side of the rim, it swirls in for him. And the 76ers lead by 11. Second quarter play, almost three minutes gone here. The three ball. Kept alive. Merch. And yep, that's going to be a flagrant one. Unnecessary contact. Ooh, hard foul. Can't let him get away with that level of contact. That's a simple call for the officials to make. Everyone knows the league is cracking down on that kind of intimidation tactic. And that was a great replay we just saw of our mobile one block. <laughs> you know, just determined to protect the lead with all the effort they've got. Superb anticipation on that block. And the first one at the line is good. And he can't hit the second. Outside Fultz. And about three minutes played now in the second quarter. Here's Birch. He's coming off a 10-point game against Chicago. And he didn't just put up big points. He beat everyone to the boards. From deep. Rebound by the 76ers. Howard's got six rebounds now in the game. 
They really have a commanding lead, not just in points, but in rebounds as well. Pass to Green. Harris outside. Shot clock at six. Now Ross. A 17-point game for him in the win against Chicago. Now here's Fournier. Back to Vucevic. On the wing, Fournier. And once again, off the mark by Orlando. For Philadelphia, they've gotten two of five shots to fall this second quarter. Pass to Harris. Here's Maxi. From outside, off the mark. The Magic shooting a low 31%. Their offense is lacking. Fultz passes to Vucevic. Over Green. Here's Fultz. And once again, off the mark by Orlando. Philadelphia has gone 0 for 2 from outside in the second quarter. Harris on the wing. And there it is for him. In so many ways, Harris can beat you. He has the size and skill to score from all three levels. Now here's Fultz. He's got five. The baseline J is on the way, and the jumper is good. Fultz has got seven points. Well, terrific to see Markel Fultz knock it down, looking more and more assertive in the mid-range. Here's Maxi, still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game from him. And so he draws the foul, headed to the line to shoot a pair. Oh, Grant, we've seen these players take a bigger stand and have a bigger voice now in helping shape public policy. And you yourself have been a part of that. Talk about what that's meant to you and the importance of making your voice heard. Yeah, B.A., it's been so important to me. I've tried to live my adult Take life, my public life, exercising the power of my voice. And as I look to today's players, they have taken that and run with it. With the advent of technology and social media, players in all sports and from all over the world understand the power of their voice and are willing to use that to speak out on all types of social issues. We saw that last year with the NBA bubble in Orlando. It really speaks of how today's players have evolved into more than just an athlete. The Magic making a switch here. Gordon's checked in. And the second free throw is good. And they'd love to cut this deficit down to single digits. Outside Fultz, and out of bounds, the 76ers will take it. One of those nights where the wheels come off, nerves seem to be playing a factor. Joel Embiid, he's checked in for Howard. Here's Maxi. Boy, he's been patient so far. Nothing yet on the scoreboard. Pass to Harris. Down low. Here's Maxi. Here's Korkmaz. Five to shoot. Three pointer. The Sixers with another miss. He couldn't believe how open he was. He just couldn't convert it. And here's Ross. Picked by Vucevic. Here's Fultz. And there's the slam. Dunk the finish it off. Boy, there's big time athleticism in the body of Markel Fultz. Get up, young sir. Outside Tybal. To the left wing. Out to the right wing. Here's Maxi, covered by Vucevic. Hey, from beyond the arc. And it's Maxi missing. Orlando trailing here. 
Here's Ross. And the bucket counts. And he is on his way to the line. He'll try to make it a three-point play. Boy, when you think Terrence Ross, it's the eye-popping talent that you see. And obviously, for young guys, finding that consistency is the one thing you wish you'd see more of from Ross. But boy, if he finds it, guys, he's got the potential to be a star. You know, Doris, those hot and cold streaks for Ross, it's been the story of his career. That's right, B.A. Don't forget, Ross once exploded for 50 points in a game. He has that kind of takeover ability when that shot is falling. Ross knows it's an issue, and he's working hard to become more consistent. That is all you can ask. And so the ball out of bounds. Embiid touched it last. Boy, not sure what happened on that one. Just an unforced error. And the 76ers making a change here. And for the Magic, they're shooting only 31% in the second quarter of this one. Pass to Ross. There's the triple. The rebound by Embiid. Embiid's got six rebounds in the game. I'll tell you what, they've been aggressive and they've been physical. Outside Milton. Anthony against Simmons. Clock at six. Nails it. He's now six for eight from the floor. If you give him any sort of space, he's going to attack. Orlando shooting about 35% so far in this game. Pass to Gordon. Back to Anthony. The Sixers leading. Outside Simmons. Now a moment to take a look at the year-to-year -year scoring output and how it's been trending for Tobias Harris. And the scoring trend over the last few years has been going down a bit. That's not what you want, and I'm sure it's something he's well aware of. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. He misses the free throw. Well, Grant, you played on many iconic teams during your career. What was your time with the seven seconds or less Suns like? Ooh, that was a blast, B.A. Up and down the court, a lot of offense. Steve Nash, Amari Stoudemire, Mike D'Antoni. What a fun system to play in. Really, and it helped revolutionize the game. The game transitioned to now more up-tempo, fast break, spread the floor, shoot a lot of three-pointers. The way that Phoenix Suns team played that seven seconds or less basketball is what you're seeing now in today's Pure from three-point range. Curry's got his second basket on the night. Boy, had this shot on automatic. The confidence so crucial to what Seth Curry brings to the table. Pass to Gordon. And he scores it. Now five of nine from the field. They just look so overwhelmed inside. But that's why they continue to get attacked. Now Embiid. Throws it up high. And it's Simmons with the chance. You can't discount Embiid's value as a passer. That vision and court awareness. These are traits a team loves to have in a big man. Now here's Anthony. 14 points for him, last game against Chicago. Well, you also have to credit the way he controlled the pace of the game and was able to create for his teammates. And right now, they're plus eight in the rebounding category. That's helping them run away with this. Here's Embiid. It's good. And a beautiful setup from Simmons that time. Embiid's got 14 points for the game. Offensively, it's been a struggle for him. Yeah, they need to stream together some shots to have any kind of chance. Anthony against Simmons. And you can tell right there, the defense is totally fine with him shooting that. That's not his game. Count that bucket. 17 points in the game. 
Boy, absolutely yes. no rim protection, leading to a lot of easy buckets. Anthony outside. The three. Gets the three to fall. Anthony's got his first three points of the game. And when you're trailing in a game, it, it can be tempting to try to go for the big play. Pass to Embiid. Over Baba. Embiid can't hit. Well, tremendous defensive effort on the interior. That's the kind of contest you want. Now here's Gordon. Anthony with it. He's been a big scorer for this offense, averaging around 20 points a game. Boy, what a nightmare quarter for this guy. He's playing right into the hands of the defense at this point. Here's Simmons. And misses it off the right side of the rim. That's a difficult shot. And if he could do it again, I think he definitely would pass it off there. To the inside. And Gordon with the big finish. Well, he came into the league as an incredible athlete, but Aaron Gordon has put in the work to be a great offensive player. And right before our very eyes, it's happening. Now here's Harris. He's coming off a 10-point game against Milwaukee. And you know, guys, the other thing I really appreciated about his effort in that game was the effort and work on the glass. What a well-rounded performance. Well, the coach loves this kind of ball movement. Anytime you create something inside the free throw line, you know it's a good look. Indeed, passes to Simmons. Harris outside. Pass to Curry from the arc. Knocks down the long J. Curry's got his third basket of the night. Boy, he's putting pressure on the defense. That's two from downtown this period. Now Ross. From deep three-point range. Ooh, he released it in time, but it's off the mark. And that'll do it for the first half of play. The Sixers on top. They lead by 11. All right, now let's check in with Allie LaForce. Allie, what do you have? Joel, you got out to an early lead. A lot to like in your performance thus far. What have you liked about it? Well, I thought we played great. Defensively, I know that I have someone. But I mean, if I made a mistake that was going to protect the win, I thought we did great. Thanks, Joel. Guys? As always, terrific interview, Allie. We'll be right back to begin the third quarter right after this. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, everybody. Good to see you back here on our halftime show. Well, actually, we can't see you, but you can see us, but you get it. Ernie Johnson, Kenny the Jet Smith, Shaquille O'Neal. You're watching the NBA on 2K Sports. Ben Simmons putting in some incredible work. He ended up with 17 points, three rebounds, and four assists. It's been quite a night so far for him. Let's start with you, Shaq. What do you think about the Sixers? The difference maker is Ben Simmons, playing with exceptional focus, single-mindedly attacking the hoop. His energy is boosting the whole routine. Kenny, let's get your insight on Orlando. It looked like they were shooting threes blindfolded. Sometimes you could get cold, but that was atrocious. It was scary. But they also looked scattered out there, and I think that disorganization was the main issue for them missing those shots. They need to establish themselves better, get to a better rhythm in the second half, and avoid relying so heavily on the three-point shot. And it's just about time now for the third quarter to get underway. the second half upon us. We'll find out if this game becomes the route that it's threatening to be. Really an incredible game from Ben Simmons. Yeah, they've done an amazing job of creating room to operate for. And then, of course, executing. One of the things every player is after is efficiency at the offensive end. And boy, this young guy has done just that. And with a big gap on the scoreboard, the second half begins with very different goals for these teams. One side trying to mount a comeback, one side trying to protect their lead. Fultz runs the point with Fournier at the two. Gordon plays four, Vucevic at center. And it's Ross in at the three. That's who's out there for Orlando. Now here's Simmons. He's got 17. Harris on the wing, defended by Gordon. 
Vucevic against Simmons. Driving inside. That one goes. And that's his ninth made shot in 12 attempts. Probably a play they drew up in the locker room at half. Well, there is nothing better than catching a rhythm as early as possible. And boy, that's a terrific start right there. Here's Fultz. He's got nine. Up top, Vucevic. And there's a whistle. He'll head to the line to shoot two. That's on Joel Embiid. When you think about Vucevic, right, guys? Always been able to produce on the offensive end of the floor. This guy's willing to take some of the burden offensively and take pressure off his teammates. Shooting two. First free throw is good. You know the career numbers for Vucevic? A double-digit score since his rookie season, Doris. Yeah, there's some consistency there, B.A., with the scoring. There have been ups and downs in other aspects of his career. But this is a guy I believe can be 16 points, 10 rebounds, double-double every night. Maybe not a superstar, but somebody you can count on. And so Vucevic nails both of them. Philadelphia shooting a fantastic 57%. Pass to Embiid. Shoots over Vucevic. Embiid misses. Hey, sometimes the best looks don't equate to points. Now here's Fultz. Nine points in the game. Takes it inside. Fires the three. No good. So Philadelphia will take it the other way. The biggest lead of the game, 15 points. Come to me, come to me. Now here's Thibel. Fournier covering. And here's Thibel. Well, he hasn't scored yet, but I'm sure that'll change. Embiid can't hit. Orlando has gone 0 for 2 from outside here in the third. Here's Fultz. On the wing, Fournier. And Embiid with the block. For the finish. And slam dunk by Simmons. And he just driving the stake in him there. He's a guy who just never lets up. Well, you love that he wants to wear out the defense. What a catalyst for his team. Incredible. Now here's Ross. He's got six, and he gets the bucket. Ross has got eight points. Showing off the dribble moves. Able to create for himself. I love it. Simmons, the pass to Harris. Back to Simmons. To the wing, right side. Just five on the clock. And he lobs it up top. Smooth finish off a terrific feed. Man, the timing and execution could have been any better right there. Fultz passes to Vucevic. Gordon outside. Back to Vucevic. Pass to Ross. From outside the arc. And it's Philadelphia with the rebound. And their physical dominance has been on display. A 10 rebound advantage is a good indicator of how this game has gone. Harris outside. Gordon with a steal. A chance here to catch up with Allie from the sideline. Brian, this season started later out of necessity, but there's been talks of permanently pushing the schedule back. Avoiding overlap with football would be a plus, but on the other hand, guys, the players who are parents, they want summer breaks with their kids too. Yeah, that's a lot to consider, Allie. Good stuff there. We'll see how it shakes out. Here's Ross. That three's off the mark. What a brutal night for this guy, and it is having a ripple effect throughout the team. This is tough. Pass to Embiid. Shoots over Vucevic. 
and it comes off the front of the rim. And it didn't fall, but still a great look. You know, it can be frustrating when you make the right play and fail to reap the rewards. You just have to stay with it here. For Philadelphia, they've gotten three of six shots to fall so far in the third. Simmons with it. He's got 21. Harris passes to Simmons. Six to shoot. Late clock. The Sixers need to put one up here. Bible, that's good. The assist numbers certainly stand out. <laughs> They've really emphasized ball movement here today. Outside Fultz. Picked by Vucevic. And it's Fultz off the drive. Ooh, rejected by Harris. Simmons against Fultz. Simmons, the pass to Harris. And then Embiid with the dunk. We all know rebounding is about effort. Embiid is showing lots of it. I love how he's unwilling to give up on the play. And the Magic call time here. Things just aren't going their way. He clearly wants to talk it over. Well, night in and night out, sometimes it's a battle of runs. Who has the most? there. They've shown the power inside. Their rebounding effort has been sensational. Out left to the wing. Let's it fly. And he gets it to go, hitting off the back of the rim. Embiid's got 20. And what's working here? Each guy is willing to make the next pass. Fultz finds Vucevic. Here's Birch. Averaging around five points a game. Shot clock at six. Pass to Fultz. From deep. Korkmaz pulls it in. Philadelphia's going one for two from outside the arc in this third quarter. It's hauled in by the Magic. Vucevic has got nine rebounds now. They've been having major problems offensively. Definitely in a bit of a dry spell. For Philadelphia, they've gotten 6 of 11 attempts to fall so far in the third. Driving to the basket. Benny hits it and gets hacked. A three-point chance here if he can convert. <laughs> They're really working the paint now. Orlando making some changes. Bombas checked in for Vucevic. Carter Williams comes in for Gordon. And Anthony subbed in for Fultz. And Philadelphia also making a switch. Curry's checked in. called here the magic decide to talk it over that's a good timeout 
They just can't hit anything. Sometimes it just feels like misses become contagious. He wants to settle his guys down right now. see how things are shaping up in the East. Taking a look at Philadelphia, they are holding down the number one spot in the conference. Not a bad position to be in. And of course, Orlando, far behind in the standings. And right now for the Magic, they've stayed within arm's length of the conference leaders. That in itself is an accomplishment at this point in the season. Yeah, even so though, I'm sure they're not satisfied just being near the top. They're going to be looking to make a major push as the season winds down. Well, this is the kind of pass that gets everyone excited. It's also how you build great team chemistry. MB drawing the double team. Here's Carter Williams. Well, he hasn't put up any points yet in this one. Anthony misses. Here's Philadelphia. They're on a 16-6 run. Outside Curry. Pass to Howard. Here's Carter Williams. He's averaging just around eight and a half points a game. No luck on that one. Embiid with a nice defensive effort. Here's Korkmaz. Here's Maxi. Down to five on the shot clock. Howard inside. And it's good with time running down on the shot clock. Looks like we're starting to see a pattern here. Not afraid to get in the paint and get wet. Pass to Birch. Now Bamba. He has six. Fournier for three. Rebound by the 76ers. Howard's got 11 rebounds in the game. Here's Korkmaz on the take. Fournier with a rebound. Looking to end this cold spell. To the paint. Here's Birch. And another miss by Orlando. The 76ers have gotten 8 of 14 attempts to go in the second half so far. And he lobs it up! Ah! The shot by Howard, no good. And the idea was good, but the execution severely lacking. Just a missed connection, and it happens. I'm sure they will go back to it if given the opportunity. Outside Curry. And he can't get that one. And Orlando will come the other way. Things just don't seem to be clicking for them offensively. Yeah, they really need to find a way to get back on track. After the outside. Going inside. Just showing some tremendous authority controlling the boards. Love it. Wow, what a performance. And he's not just winning with physical ability, he's winning with anticipation. Here's Korkmaz. And he slams it in one-handed. And a 
solid pick to free him up for the dunk. Boy, the timing there couldn't be any better. Uh, the execution was simply flawless. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you run that play. Now here's Fournier. His offense has been fantastic, averaging just over 17 a game. Philadelphia has gone one for two from outside the arc in this third quarter. Here's Maxi. Pass to Embiid. And Embiid gets the double team. Here's Korkmaz. Hits the three-pointer. Korkmaz has got seven. You know, we call that great recognition of the situation. He knew where the double team on him was coming from. A teammate was open somewhere, and he found it. Here's Carter Williams. Looking for his first basket still in this one. With the drive. Softly drops in the floater. Well, instead of forcing it all the way to the cup, he just goes with that little teardrop. Here's Maxi. Howard, 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 Howard. 103 left in the third. Embiid passes to Howard, and it's out of bounds. The Sixers able to retain possession here. He clipped the ball there, but not enough to nab the steal. But a really good read on his part, being disruptive at the defensive end right now. There's 57 seconds left in the third quarter. Here's Howard. Some solid defense from Bamba. Never easy to stop this guy at the rim, but that is a beautiful contest right there. Outside Fournier. He takes it in. And he was fouled while in the act of shooting, so he'll take two free throws. Okay, flashing some impressive instincts. Evan Fournier knowing when to attack and draw the foul. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And he makes a first. You get a little glimpse into the mindset of Evan Fournier. This guy will do whatever it takes to win. Harris has checked in for the Sixers. That one falls, so he hits both of them. And they've done. Misses yet. Here's Maxi. Pass to Embiid. And the call will be against Mo Bamba. That's his first foul of the game. Nineteen seconds left in the third quarter. Now here's Curry. Five on the clock. Fires for three. Can't hit that one. This guy's got tremendous instincts and a tremendous wingspan. That is what makes Danny Green so good on the defensive end. At the end of the third quarter, a huge lead. This one may have already been decided. The Sixers on top, running away with it. And time to step away quickly, but we'll be back in no time with the start of the fourth quarter. And a worthy candidate tonight as we take a look at our State Farm Assist of the Game. And the winner today coming from an unlikely position. It's the big fellow with the sweetest pass of the day. But we have some elite passing big men in the NBA and you love that skill. Wow. 
Well, there may not be a lot of drama down the stretch as we head into the fourth quarter, but stranger things have happened. So, on the floor for Philadelphia. Harris and Embiid make up the front court. Shake Milton out there with Ben Simmons. And it's Green in at the three, the small forward. Boy, he's definitely covered well there. And it, we know he can knock down the fadeaway shot. Just didn't fall there. And the foul on Ben Simmons. That's foul number two for him. And in a game where titles can turn on a single possession, you hear coaches and players talk about certain plays that haunt them. Doris, can you relate? Well, B.A., the margin between winning and losing is often razor thin. Think no further than the Mike Conley wide open three in the series against Denver in last season's playoffs. They had a 3-1 series there, lead. If he makes the three-point shot, they move on. And yet that thing rattles down and out. It was a matter of inches, and their season comes to a crashing thud. Of course, this is why we love sports, the incredible highs and the absolutely soul-crushing lows. Now here's Harris. Set up, set up. Pass to Embiid. From deep three-point range, that falls. Nice setup by Harris. Harris has got three assists now in this one. Now Gordon. To the right side. To the left side wing. Picked by Vucevic. Fultz into the lane. Count the basket. Well, make no mistake, Markel Fultz, because of his athletic burst, can score on the interior. That's nicely done. First minute and a half of basketball played here in the fourth. And he's going for the oop here. Simmons, no good. And Orlando shooting only 31% in the game. Pass to Anthony. Looking to get it going. It's not going to go for him. Good D by Harris. Outside Milton. And here's Simmons. Well, Grant, one area where we've seen great advancement is how we're seeing injuries treated. The rehabbing of these injuries and the speed in which players are coming back is unprecedented. It really is, B.A., and certainly I've experienced my fair share of injuries. And over the last 20-plus years, uh, the advancement uh, in, in not only treating injuries, but preventative measures so you don't get hurt. And, and so uh, teams now, whether it's load management, understanding the importance of nutrition, rest, recovery, all of these things factor in to the sophistication level now that's applied to players. And so in a way, I wish I was 25 right now in today's NBA uh, with all the technology and uh, sophistication available to teams. Volt passes to Vucevic. Fires the three. Philadelphia grabs the miss. Simmons has got a rebound number five here tonight. Pass to Poirier. To the wing on the left. Here's Thibault. The Sixers with another miss. I'll tell you, despite his struggles at the offensive end, this team still finds themselves in control of the ball game. The offensive rebound. Philadelphia has gotten just one of their four threes to go here in the fourth quarter. Down low. Here's Bradley. Nice dish, and the layup goes down. Bradley's got his first points in this one. And trust me, when the D's slow to react, he'll be the first guy to make them pay. And that's typical of this guy. He's always reading the situation, reacting quickly, and capitalizing. Now here's Gordon. Here's Vucevic. Misses off the left iron. I think he's gone completely dry. Nothing is hitting. And this is where you hope that he can find something easy so he can see the ball go through the net. Here's Thibel. Simmons. And slam dunk by Simmons. <laughs> B.A., the one-hand dunk just looks so fluid. Yeah, absolutely. Even smooth when he's powering at home like that. Puts up a three. Sinks the tray. Well, Markel Fultz continues to develop his floor awareness. Passes like that will create all kinds of chemistry. Pass to Poirier. 
And every year in the draft, we see teams being risk-averse, avoiding players with medical red flags. But we've seen teams who took a chance often rewarded Doris. That's exactly right, D.A. Look no further than Michael Porter Jr. Back issues while he was one year in college at Missouri scared away a lot of teams. But here's a young man who on the offensive end and from a rebounding perspective has shown a big time upside. He is a big time shot maker, incredible shooter, even under duress and contest. Defensively, he's got to grow. But I'll tell you what, for GMs who are secure in their jobs, they can take a flyer on a talent like Michael Porter Jr. and the opportunity to pay huge dividends is there. At the line, seven sixes, Ben Simmons. Two shots. Two shots. No good on that one. Ross, he's checked in for Orlando. Fournier comes in for Ennis. And the 76ers making a change here. Good on the second one. And here's Fultz. And you look around the league, the step back three seems to be the shot every player wants in their arsenal. Doris is a defender. How do you deal with that? Well, closing out to a shooter is one of the single hardest things to do in basketball. Ideally, you close out to the shooting hand side. One thing you absolutely cannot do, you can't foul a three-point shooter. Those are killers. And he's easily led the way on the boards tonight. He's competed for every missed shot. Feels like he's quicker to the basketball than anyone else out there. Now here's Vucevic. Bible with the board. Bible's got four rebounds now. Here's Simmons. And he's going to the line for two. The official saw contact while he was going up. It goes on Terrence Ross. That free throw misses. Orlando making some changes. Clark comes in for Vucevic. And Aminu is subbed in for Gordon. He hits the second from the line. Fultz with it. Grant the landing zone rule that has been in effect now for a few years. At first, a lot of defenders complain, but closeouts on three-point shooters has certainly affected how the game is called right now, and it seems to have reduced injuries. Yeah, first of all, anything we can do to reduce injuries is important. Certainly, I know a thing or two about that. Uh, but yes, this is so important and I'm so necessary, and I'm so glad that the league and the players now have embraced this. We have to protect shooters, and sometimes that can be considered even a dirty play. Uh, so I do like this landing zone rule, and as you said, there have been fewer injuries as a result. Now here's Fultz. Just five to shoot. Korkmaz pulls it in. Korkmaz has got four rebounds in the game. Outside Thibel, pass to Simmons. Back to Thibel. 4-3. Here's Howard, and the foul on the shot. So he'll take two from the free throw line. And there's the call, Orlando with the foul. Boy, there is such a punishing physicality to the game of Dwight Howard. Excellent job getting to the free throw line. Two shot.
That free throw, no good. And the league wants every team to compete. Flattening the lottery odds was step one. But Doris, what might they do next? Well, B.A., I think they're in a constant state of self-evaluation, and they're looking for opportunities to elevate the play in their game. So one of the things that's been talked about, you see this in European soccer, losing teams get relegated to the minor leagues. Is that something they would consider? And obviously, when money is on the table, could there be a financial disincentive for losing? That could change the equation. I think everything is on the table to try to always improve the game. Pass to Clark to stop the drought. Out of bounds, it'll go to the Sixers. A moment now to see how the schedule is looking for the Philadelphia 76ers. On Wednesday, they'll be matching up with Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat. Then on Saturday, they'll go up against the Pacers in Indiana. When you look ahead, there are a lot of winnable games, but you really can't think that as a player. You have to take every opponent seriously because this is the NBA. No game is a freebie. Here's Bradley. Out to the right wing for three. They grab their own miss. Howard shots good. Well, this has been one of the staples of Dwight Howard's game. Get on the glass on the offensive end and finish it. They're searching for a way to score. Yeah, buckets have been very tough to come by. Here's Carter Williams. Clark up top. Pass to Carter Williams. There's the drive. The rebounding numbers make it obvious why they're in front. Well, they've absolutely dominated that category in this one, and it's reflected in the score. Here's Maxi. He shoots it. The second effort. And Howard with the lay-in. Howard's gotten four this quarter. They've been a little soft with their defense on the interior. Pass to Clark. Here's Carter Williams. Misses, and the dry spell continues. And last season, the G League voting to unionize, so it's a league on the rise, with the players collectively bargaining making sure they're rewarded. And think about it, P.A., for a very long oh, time, a the G a League break. could not pay Two as shots. well as those overseas leagues. That is now changing, and players are able to earn a living in the G League. What a dynamic change. And he drops the first. on both here's Maxi pass to Cork Moss here's Bradley comes up empty down low Six feet away. Oh, and he got fouled on his way up. He'll head to the line to shoot two. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. First free throw is good, and load management, a term that's entered the NBA lexicon in recent years, obviously good to protect the player's health, but Doris, any concerns about players sitting? Absolutely, B.A. First of all, you sympathize with the fans who paid for the ticket expecting the star to play and then being disappointed. 
from the broadcast perspective, obviously your TV partners want the best players on the floor. They're putting the best teams on the air because of the star power. This is a weighty issue for the NBA. If the season is too long and players are too tired, then maybe you need to shorten the season. But you cannot give short shrift to your constituents. Your league is based on fans and engagement. This is something the league has got to deal with. Here's Carter Williams following the score by Philadelphia. That shot off the mark, and it's Philadelphia the other way. Here's Maxi. Misses the three. Orlando has gone one for five from downtown here in the fourth. A minute 42 left in the fourth quarter of this one. And you can see how scary this team can be when everything is clicking for them. Just a terrific performance for the 76ers. Pretty clear who the better team was today. They dominated in just about every phase of this game, Grant. <laughs> B.A., it's almost hard to think what didn't go well for them. Their plan, their execution, everything was absolutely on point. So it's Philadelphia now, following the bucket by the Magic. Pass to Poirier. Over to the wing. Here's Maxi. Six on the shot clock. And they knew it wasn't going to be easy to win on the road, but they've controlled the pace on this one. And sometimes when everyone's rooting against you, it seems to bring the unit closer together. It certainly did tonight. Here's Carter Williams following the score by Philadelphia. Pass to Clark. Here's Aminu. No good on the triple. So it's Philadelphia now. About seven seconds separating the shot and game clocks. Here's Maxi. Aminu with the rebound. Here's Ennis. Problem for Philadelphia as they get the win. To walk into enemy territory and deliver a performance like that, that says a lot about this squad. They really came in looking confident and didn't let anything shake them. This is what a dominant team looks like. Well, now we have some time to check in with Allie LaForce. Allie. Joel, we've heard critics in the past question your level of conditioning. How do you answer those critics? You know, I'm just going to keep on doing what I've been doing this year and I've been healthy and uh, I haven't been injured and I'm going to try to keep that, I'm trying to, going to keep that way, so. We'll stay locked in and wishing you the best health. Thanks, Joel. All right, Allie, thank you. And that's going to do it tonight, folks, for our broadcast. For Allie LaForce, Grant Hill, and Doris Burke, I'm Brian Anderson saying thanks for tuning in. So long, everyone.